As Gotham's Dark Knight, Batman has saved the city from peril on countless occasions. But Bruce Wayne is only human, after all, and even he makes mistakes. These are the Gotham villains that Batman himself had a hand in creating. Much of what makes the Joker so terrifying is the mystery surrounding his true origins. You want to know how I got these scars? While most major DC Comics characters have clear and concise origin stories, the Joker's various creation myths are openly acknowledged as being mostly made up by the man himself. It's assumed by most fans that they'll never know the truth about the Joker's beginnings for certain, but some stories do hang on with unique tenacity. Joker's most popular comics origin story comes from 1987's The Killing Joke, in which Joker recounts his origins as a down-on-his-luck stand-up comedian who suffers a string of tragedies that gradually send him mad. Of course, he pretty much immediately recants this tale, too, but there's no doubt that it's the one origin that has endured in the minds of fans. In this version of the Joker's origins, he crosses paths with Batman one fateful night at Ace Chemicals. The man who would be Joker is there as part of a heist in the guise of the Red Hood, a tuxedo and helmet-clad gangster. There, he is confronted by Batman, then still a novice crime fighter, but more than a match for the Red Hood. Their struggle ends with the Red Hood leaping over a catwalk railing into a vat of chemicals in order to escape. He's washed into the river and emerges with bleached skin, green hair, and a permanent sickly grin. This story is taken as gospel. Then Batman is forced to forever wonder how many lives might have been saved if the fight at Ace Chemicals had gone differently. If you're asking about villains made by Batman, then Matches Malone is as literal as it gets. Because Batman is Matches Malone. In fact, Matches Malone is a persona utilized by Batman whenever he needs to infiltrate the crime underworld. A pinstripe-clad gangster from Hoboken, Malone is a pyromaniac, a teetotaler, and if you believe the rumors, a squealer to the Batman, since he'll often take a job as muscle and then fail to show up before the Dark Knight drops in. Matches Malone is not a wholesale invention, though. He's based off an arsonist who Batman encounters early in his career and presumes to have died. He takes on Malone's identity for his own purposes for years, and after a certain point, most of Gotham's criminals have never even met the real Malone. Over the years, Batman builds his version of Malone into a respected figure in Gotham's underworld, and even devises a contingency plan to maneuver Malone into position to take direct control of Gotham's gangs. In the 2004 story arc Batman War Games, Stephanie Brown, aka Spoiler, steals this plan in an attempt to bring down Gotham's underworld and demonstrate her value as a partner to Batman. Unfortunately, she does this without knowing Malone's true identity and without alerting Batman himself. When Malone fails to appear at a critical moment, a gang war breaks out that nearly tears Gotham apart. As it turns out, the most dangerous thing Matches Malone could do is not show up at all. In 1992's Batman's Sword of Azrael, Batman encounters Jean-Paul Valley, aka Azrael, a genetically enhanced, hypnotically conditioned knight of the ancient order of Saint Dumas. Batman and Azrael soon find themselves on the same side, and Azrael is invited to train alongside Robin as part of Batman's ever-expanding family of crime fighters. Mere months later, in the much-celebrated Nightfall story arc, Batman loses a battle with the muscle-bound mastermind Bane and is left a paraplegic. Thus, Bruce Wayne passes the mantle of the Bat to Jean-Paul, the apprentice he's worked with for the shortest length of time and knows the least about. No one but Bruce thinks this is a very good idea. Bruce then jets off across the pond for a year to seek a remedy for his broken back leaving the new Batman, or Azbats, with the run of the cave. But Azbats finds himself haunted by his subconscious programming and constrained by the rules and conventions of being Batman, and he gradually adopts more and more violent methods of crime fighting. Eventually, he becomes little more than an executioner in an armored suit, transformed from hero to villain. A freshly recovered Bruce Wayne is ultimately forced to take down the Mad Pretender and restore the dignity of Batman. Batman is a brilliant detective, 
and an Olympic level athlete, but his most important asset might still be his mountain of wealth. It's only fitting then that there's one villain who, in the words of Dick Grayson, is made possible by a grant from the Wayne Foundation. Introduced in a 1994 episode of Batman the Animated Series, Lyle Bolton is a top-shelf security expert who is hired at Arkham Asylum on Bruce's recommendation. On paper, Bolton is a great choice for putting a stop to the asylum's infamous weekly jailbreaks, but once he's in place, he proves to be an extravagantly cruel jailer, delighting in the abuse of inmates like Scarecrow and Harley Quinn. He says scum like us must be kept in line. That's why he chains us down at night and electrifies our doors. Appalled, Bruce sees to Bolton's swift dismissal. Bolton vows revenge, not only on the inmates who reported his abuse, but on the establishment that he believes to be coddling criminals. He invents the costume persona of Lockup, kidnaps a number of prominent people, and holds them captive in an offshore battleship turned prison. Lockup is defeated by Batman and Robin before he can do any more damage and returns to Arkham as an inmate, where he relishes the chance to keep a close eye on his former prisoners. There's no antagonist for whom Batman can take more personal responsibility than Jason Todd, aka the Red Hood. After parting ways with Dick Grayson, Batman decides to hand the mantle of Robin to a juvenile delinquent named Jason Todd. Batman first encounters Todd when he discovers the kid has boosted the tires off the Batmobile, which is just about the gutsiest thing one could do on the streets of Gotham. Concerned for his future but impressed by his moxie, Batman offers Jason a new home and a new purpose as Robin, the Boy Wonder. Jason never quite sheds the chip on his shoulder, however, and has difficulty playing by Batman's rules. Frustrated and confused, Jason is lured into a trap by the Joker, who beats him within an inch of his life with a crowbar and leaves him to die in a warehouse explosion in 1988's Batman A Death in the Family. Batman carries his guilt over Jason's apparent death for years, even as he attempts to move on with his life. Jason eventually resurfaces, fashioning himself after the Joker's original masked identity in order to enact his revenge against his would-be killer. As the new Red Hood, Jason terrorizes Batman to punish him for leaving Joker alive. In the years since his return, Red Hood has oscillated between villain and anti-hero, but wherever he lands, he never stays there for long. Batman has always had trust issues, but during one particularly dark chapter in his career, his paranoia grows so rampant that he resorts to extremes usually reserved for government intelligence agencies. After he discovers that members of the Justice League have conspired to tamper with his memory, Batman develops a global network of orbital surveillance satellites governed by an artificial intelligence called Brother Eye. Brother Eye covertly monitors metahumans, including Batman's allies, and is meant to prevent future violations of his trust. Predictably, this backfires as Brother Eye is hijacked by Checkmate double agent Maxwell Lord to surveil superheroes and assimilate unsuspecting civilians into armored super soldiers. Brother Eye is later granted sentience by an alternate universe as Alexander Luthor and is used in a complex plan to bring about a new multiverse, becoming Brother I, this time spelled E-Y-E. -E. In a twist of irony, Batman must enlist a small army of super-powered allies to destroy the satellite. Batman has made his share of mistakes, but usually he at least has good intentions. Building a Skynet-scale cybernetic intelligence to spy on his friends, though? This may be the Dark Knight's all-time biggest blunder. The story is familiar. A mother, a father, and a young boy walk innocently into a dark alley and are confronted by a man with a gun. But this time around, Batman arrives to save the family. This is what Batman was made to do. He prevents the exact kind of heartbreak that created him. Batman's luck being what it is, though, means even this story ends in tragedy. The boy in this story, Hank Clover, grows up idolizing Batman and takes his example to heart. He and his sister Claire train their minds and bodies for years in the hopes of following in Batman's footsteps. Sadly, 
the malevolent genius Bane exploits their good intentions, offering them a procedure that will give them the powers of Superman. Naturally, it comes with a catch. The more they use their powers, the sooner they'll die. Believing that a short life doing enormous good is worthwhile, Hank and Claire undergo the procedure and become Gotham and Gotham Girl. The siblings get to live their dream of working alongside Batman to protect Gotham City, but the dream is, predictably, short-lived. As part of his master plan, Bane unleashes the emotion-manipulating Psycho Pirate, turning them both mad. Gotham goes on a killing spree and is only defeated by the combined might of Gotham Girl and the Justice League. They force Hank to use up his powers and he dies in his sister's arms. There are those who argue that Batman does more bad than good in Gotham City, that his very presence provokes the violence around him. The Victim Syndicate are a quintet of villains who embody this argument. Each count themselves as collateral damage in Batman's war on crime and make it their mission to shut down his operation for good. Mr. Noxious is a recovered thrall of Poison Ivy's, whose experiments made him a toxic presence to those around him, literally. Madame Crow is a psychiatrist and a survivor of Scarecrow's torturous early fear toxin experiments, and now employs similar chemical weapons of her own. The mute lost his larynx after exposure to Joker's laughing gas and has since acquired the ability to block sound waves. Mudface is a former friend of Clayface, who was left with melting flesh after being drowned in the chemicals that first made the villain into a shape-shifting monster. Their leader, the first victim, remains anonymous, but claims to be the very first innocent to suffer from Batman's actions. Together, they face off against Batman and his team of allies, attempting to shake their resolve and turn public opinion against them. The Victim Syndicate fails to defeat or unmask Batman, but they do win one small victory. They receive a sincere apology from the Dark Knight himself. So here's a question, is Batman good for Bruce Wayne? Bruce Wayne had his parents taken from him as a child, and with them, his hope. Thus, Bruce embraces fear as an ally, forging it into a powerful symbol against those who would take hope from others. But in so doing, Bruce Wayne sacrifices his body and his emotional well-being again and again, even when he's offered a way out. I'm afraid that if I go back out there, I'll fail. I'm afraid that you want to. Even as he builds a support system around himself, Bruce Wayne cannot stop being Batman. And being Batman smothers every other part of his life. There are times of relative peace for Bruce when being Batman is more fulfilling than it is punishing. He has even been able to free himself from the pain of his parents' loss for a time, but it never lasts. Bruce Wayne is a human being. Batman, however, is unrelenting. They need each other. But of the two of them, only one is immortal and whatever it eventually reads on Bruce Wayne's death certificate, we'll know the truth. It'll be Batman who really killed him. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more Looper videos about DC Comics are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.